Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Lisa. It's just madness in my household. You all have no idea. Just a little bit. Like, you see us sitting here, and we seem like we know what we're talking about, and we seem all sensible and stuff. But no, it's an act. The foolishness. The tomfoolery. The chicanery. <laughs> You know, it's more like shenanigans. It's not really chicanery. It's, it's all of the above. More shenanigans. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of new subscribers. I want to say a special hello to all of you guys that just joined us. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lisa, and this is Chris. I am the Knit Sister, and this one here is the Crochet Sister. <laughs> So, dear sister. Uh, I feel like I'm in trouble. No, no, no. Not <laughs> at all. I, you know what? We, we, we're going to be a little bit more organized about this going um, forward. Just a smidge. Because we talked about, okay, so what we're going to talk about today. And then with all the shenanigans, I already forgot. You didn't talk so, about your article. They, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you really didn't remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! I, I, oh, brought that back right quick. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to share an article I, I found with you guys. <laughs> you know what? We do keep it 100% real here. Yes, we, we shouldn't, do. though. Maybe, maybe I want to be one of those people be, on the internet everything who's looks lying perfect. about everything. <laughs> everything looks perfect. <laughs> you know what? That's that's a goal. Right? <laughs> we can set that as a goal. <laughs> Anyway, I, you know how you sometimes you think one of your needles is faster than the other, or you know, it flows better. You know, whatever yarn you're working with might flow better on one needle or the other. Apparently, that is true. Just recently, I think it was last week, as a matter of fact, yeah, three twenty-five, just a couple of days ago, over on Modern Daily Knitting, Julian Moreno wrote this article about how needle gauge. Needle material affects your gauge, and that's what it's called. How needle material affects your gauge. Not that anyone can read that because of the glare and all of that, but I'll put a link. There you go. We don't have to be quite so manual about it. I'll put a link in the description bar below. But what she did was she took three different needles made of three different materials, and they all happen to be, I believe, from the same manufacturer, and she knit swatches of, with them on the same yarn. And her gauge was different from one needle to the next needle to the next needle. And that is something that I was never able to confirm, but I had noticed that, you know, I guess everybody who knits notice, you know, some needles, the yarn just slides right off the end. Other needles are stickier. And I think the same is going to hold true for crocheters. Except we have that nifty little hook at the end. <laughs> yes, except so nothing slides off. Nothing slides off, but I imagine that because she's saying what the difference is, is the amount of friction. See, the thing is this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. I use the same hooks all the time. I always use aluminum hooks. Oh, that's right. So you don't switch up. I don't. You should try it. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes you can just find a better pairing. Because you know what? Here's what I've experienced. I, I had this yarn. It's beautiful alpaca yarn. But alpaca is so slick, and I tried to knit it on my Addy clicks, and those Addies are coated in nickel, and they're fast needles in general. They're super smooth. I could barely, I couldn't keep, I couldn't keep the stitches together. <laughs> but you do have the shaft of the needle, and anyway, you other crocheters out there who try different needle materials, you're not quite as, let's say, regimented. As Chris is faithful, <laughs> yes, yes, that too. No, but like I don't know, my my hooks work for me. I yeah. I haven't seen like a reason. But you know what? You're good. You you found the perfect hook for you. Heaven help you if they ever stop making it. And you know, part of the issue for me is the grip mm -hmm. because I am pencil hold. Mm -hmm. Most hooks are designed for knife holders. And so when I find one that's comfortable in my hand, that's my bigger concern. I yeah. have to stick with that because other hooks might give me hand pain. Um, so as long as I have that little hook on the end to just catch that yarn, 
It doesn't matter how slippery it is. Because yeah. right now I'm working with a mercerized cotton and I have no issues. See, I would work mercerized cotton like on a wooden, like a bamboo or it, something. It depends. It turns on the yarn because, yeah, maybe a wood. Okay. Because it'll be a little slippery. And then I feel like wooden hooks have to be cared for. Like you got to oil them and you they to, might get splinters and stuff. You have to stuff. use them because the oil from your hands will be really quite enough. If you don't use them often, yeah, I had. I don't want needy hooks. <laughs> I had a set of um, wooden DPNs that eventually just dried up, and I, the, I pulled them out to use them one time, and they splintered in my hand. See, I'd be mad if I spent my money. I had had them for more than a decade though, and I hadn't used them in ages, so that was the issue. So that is an issue with wooden needles. And wooden hooks, I imagine you will have to either use them regularly or give them a little bit of care, a little TLC. Bamboo, not so much. Bamboo doesn't seem to give a dog on, <laughs> but the wooden ones, yeah. But that's something you might want to take check I'm out curious if you're having trouble if getting If crocheters gauge. are switching up their hooks, depending on what kind of um, yarn you're using, because I, I feel like that's more of a knitting concern because... <laughs> no, really, like, okay, when I tried knitting, she tried to teach me to knit, didn't go well. Uh, <laughs> my problem was making a particular piece of yarn move where I wanted it to because I didn't have a hook on the end and I felt like I was just trying to like poke it into place. <laughs> and I was like, how do you do this? This doesn't seem to actually be a thing. Um, I don't know, I felt like hobbled without that hook on the end. Um, so I feel like if it would be much more important when you are in a situation where your yarn can slide off your hook, slide off your needle, that's much more of a concern. But yeah. I feel like that hook makes all the difference, y'all. <laughs> I really do. I really do. So if y'all, if y'all out there are crocheting and switching up your hooks, let me know because I'm super curious. Because because you know what, from what I've observed with you the shape of the handle is the most important it is it is because i started off with the metal boy hooks because i inherited those from my grandmother and oh the hand pain mm -hmm. i need something with a rubberized grip so that i get a little bit of like energy return happening it's like wearing the right shoe if you're walking on concrete you want something with that rubber sole yeah um that's my always my biggest concern. I don't care about inline versus tapered. I don't. Yeah, I just I don't care what material it's made out of. It's got to be comfortable in my hand. Yeah, that's the same thing with knitting needles. But the problem with knitting Do needles, different needles feel different. Yeah, the problem with knitting needles though, if you are struggling to even hold the yarn on the needles, it's better to switch materials so that the needles themselves have a better grip because we don't have on the end. Y'all need. <laughs> On the end. <laughs> and we're really controlling the yarn <laughs> with the tension. And if you can't tension and it's going to affect your tension, it's going to affect you will have I I had hand pain when I was trying to keep that dog on alpaca on those slippery nickel needles. Mm -hmm. But it was great with, you know, sticky yarn. I, I but I'd be lost without my hook. Oh my god. <laughs> she had such a day that day. It was it was distressing to say the least i mean i made the stitches but i feel here's like she tricked part. me here's the sad part not only did she make the stitches but in one session she was actually knitting evenly without you know increasing on the side or decreasing on the side or anything she made a beautiful swatch <sighs> then i introduced the pearl mm -hmm. and it was all over i was like wait what it mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, oh, if this is knitting, like, I think I could do this. I got this. I right, bet. But the pearl, it was just like, hey, everything you learned, just, just learn, forget it. I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's when I finally understood, like, ribbing, which y'all meant by one by one rib. And I was just like, you're supposed to do what now? Just switch back and forth? Mm -mm. Yeah, it was, mm -mm. it was too much too soon. Mm -mm. Should have held back a little. But if you get a chance, do check out that article because I found it very interesting because I never understood what the 
the issue was that some ne certain needles would just react so differently to different materials. It's the drag and the friction. So, which makes sense. Yeah, it does. It totally makes sense. When she said it, I was like, oh, there you go. Forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb. Sounds really noisy. But look, Chris, I'm checking my, my thing. It, while we're recording like this the one time, her <laughs> phone will be pinging and dinging and ringing. And it's like she literally can't hear it. Sometimes I don't hear it. Don't try sending her a text message. Forget it. <laughs> Three days later, she'll be like, oh, did you send me a text message? No. <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> so now she wants to be attentive to her own. Okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> what do you got in your bag there? I may have accidentally, completely unintentionally, mm. mistakenly started a second project, which is not a thing I do. <gasps> oh, Chris, I've heard now, the story what more I than once. Said, what I had said, no, I have been working monogamously like all year. I, what I have always said is that I generally mm. work monogamously or I tend to work monogamously. So I've always qualified it. Okay. Let us be clear. Watch some of the older videos. You see, I've said I generally or I tend to or I try to. Um, it's be you know, it's funny because I was just watching this woman's video. Her name is Tiffany Lou. Check her out if you if you get a chance. Um Lou is spelled L I E W. Um she's a knitter. And her last video she was showing all of her whips. She had a lot. Like I would say maybe like more than five. And I felt like stress just really? watching her talk about all of, because I know if I had all of that going on and all these different project bags, I'd be like, well, what do I work on now? And when is this going to be fit? I just, I would feel like my attention was being split in so many directions. I, it, it's a way that I don't like to work, but let me explain what happened. Mm. As I've had this yarn sitting around for a while, it's an absolutely beautiful yarn. It is called Pendenza. Oh yeah. By Plymouth Yarns. It is a DK weight, 100% um, mercerized cotton. It's mercerized and gassed. And it's a beautiful gradient. Um, and I have wanted to use this yarn for a while. So I've had it sitting around. And like I, I think I've said before, I'm trying to do some spring summer items right now because I don't want to just like make sweaters, 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 right? Because I do not live in the tundra. <laughs> Um, so just because it's a cotton yarn, it's like, it's been on my mind, but I had no idea what I wanted to make out of it. And then this idea popped into my head that maybe, just maybe I might be able, cause I have five balls. I, I might be able to get like a little two piece set out of it. Oh, maybe. How many yarns to a ball? 240. That's bad. Yeah. And... It was the, the question mark hanging over it. Like, can I get two pieces out of it? That just, it made me like jump up and grab my hook. Cause now, now I got to know. <laughs> so I started, it's a little, and it's gonna be like a little two crop top type of thingy. Um, but look at this yarn. Just look yeah. how beautiful it is. That's gorgeous. Look, and look at that gradient. That is just stunning. So I'm, I'm glad I started it because it's just so pretty. And these are so your colors. It's just going, they're all my colors. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's just going to be a little top like so. And I'm doing the shaping just by varying stitch heights instead of increasing and decreasing. So I'm doing singles and then half doubles. And what I'm going to do to save a little bit of yarn is I'm going to just make my straps out of fabric or ribbon or something and sew them on as opposed to doing crochet straps so I can just reclaim just a little bit of yarn back. We can sew now. I, we are learning to mm. sew. <laughs> Y'all should be very clear that I always say I'm learning to sew, not that I can sew or I'm a sewer. Like I always say I'm learning to sew. But if this works out, if, big if, it may be one of the cutest things I've ever made. But you should have more than a thousand yards. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I have 1,200 yards. So right now I just started the second ball for the top, but I won't need the all, I won't need all of the second ball. 
Now, what's so, the bottom going to be? Is it going to be short to skirt? What? It's going to be a skirt. Just a, you know, like the purple skirt I mean, mm -hmm. It's basically going to be this, like a pencil skirt. And it's going to be the same thing with um, ribbing. So it'll stretch. Um, and there'll just be a little matching top and bottom for the summer. Because how cute will that be? Like, so? I thought I'd be. <laughs> So, like I said, it was just the question mark hanging over it. Like, but ooh, is that enough to make two pieces? Um, that just made me feel compelled to, like, find an answer. But I was looking online at, was it Premier? It might have been Your Inspirations. And so what I tried to do was just find a skirt mm -hmm. um, that was similar to what I wanted to do. And they made one like the medium size took two balls of yarn that were like around 300 um, yards each. So I think I should have enough. If you don't make it particularly long. You yeah. Do uh, it. No, it's, it's going to be abbreviated. So we'll see. If, if I don't have enough for a skirt, I don't know. I'll make something else. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Life will go on. But I really, I really think that I can get both pieces out yeah. of what I have. Can I feel I mean, the I fabric? Can, I can also just buy another ball if I need to. Oh, that feels delicious. And this is not something that's like been discontinued or that I can't get. It's just that I've been on like a no buy thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying. That feels so smooth. But I feel like my exception to the no buy rule is if I just need yarn to finish a project, mm -hmm. I can just buy what I need to finish the project. Um, We've been talking about maybe going to a yarn festival at some point this year, and we're considering different ones. And if I go to a yarn festival, I'm going to buy yarn because I'm not going to be like surrounded by yarn and not buy any of it. That seems sad. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but so far, all I've bought this year, what is it? Is today March 21st or April 1st? Mar March, March 31st. 31st. Yeah. So we're, we're through the first quarter of the year. And I only bought that one ball of yarn to finish my sweater. So I'm doing really, really well. So I would love to be able to finish this outfit without buying any more yarn. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. But this was an accident. I did I did all of this yesterday because it was just it was preying on my mind. I kept saying, Well, after you finish the dress, you know, you can start the outfit. But I was like, Ooh, what if I started it now? <laughs> <laughs> like I could start now if I wanted to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it happened. It. But two projects is manageable. I won't freak out too bad over that. But more than that, I don't know how y'all are doing that. I. It's funny because I used to read multiple books concurrently. And my mom would always ask me, like, how do you do that? Don't you forget where you are in each story? And I never even thought about it. it was The most I've read concurrently was four books. I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. But up to three, I was perfectly comfortable. Um. But for some reason, crochet projects are completely different. They're their own beast. And I can't split my attention like that. And I was just talking to my mom about the fact that I feel like I'm ping-ponging back and forth between crocheting and sewing. So I think I'm going to just set certain days of the week where I work on crocheting, where I work on sewing. Because I feel like when I'm doing one, mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about the other. Yeah. And have that loss of focus is an issue. So I'm just going to have dedicated days for each thing. Okay. So this is this is my second um, on accident <laughs> project. <laughs> so does it have a name? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. And then I, the dress I showed last week is is my my main project. That That's I, your main squeeze. Uh, yes, the project I'm cheating on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? If you do t find out you need a little bit more of this yarn, I have a little in my stash. The green? This no, this oh, green. this year. That. Oh, I didn't I did not know you were hiding some of this. But no, I, I had six balls of this. So I'm I'm gonna be fine. Six okay. balls at like four hundred and some odd yards each. But so this is my dress. This is where it is now. It's gonna be a boat naked, like I mentioned. But I just did the top all in the solid, the the cream color. Mm. And I like that. Yeah, I like that choice. I feel for some reason that makes it seem a little bit more summery to me. Yeah. So it's just going to be a regular old sheath dress. Nothing special. Um, I can tell you now that it was too small. No. It's okay. I'm going to tell you what happened. Oh, no. I am a high-functioning dingbat. 
And because I make so many tops, I was just kind of on autopilot when I was planning my dress. And I made the dress based on my bust measurement instead of my hip measurement. Oh, it's just no. the number I'm used to plugging in. Oh, no. Um, so it was a few inches. It's going to be a little small. However, I have a plan. I, you see, I'm not even, if this was a sewing project, I'd be like, ah! So what are you going to do? I'm going to do a cute little tuxedo stripe on oh, the side. There you go. And just add some width. Boom. And you know what? You can do that in the white. That's what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm so not mad. When it comes to crocheting, I feel like a much more competent troubleshooter. And this is the this vibe right now is just like, oh, it's gonna be too small, but I have a fix and I'm gonna do that, da da da, and it's gonna be fine. This is what I want from my sewing, and You'll I am there. not there yet. <laughs> you get there. You know, that's just experience. But you're such an experienced crocheter. I you know, hope you can't so. hold yourself to the same standard in sewing. Because right now I feel like every sewing project is some sort of like galactic threat waiting to happen <laughs> you're trying to get the plans for the death star <laughs> i really do like it's not just a menace to me like somehow i'm gonna like take out a nearby star if i you know mess up sewing it. and it's really hard to work like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i imagine so whereas with my crochet dress once i realized what the issue was i was just like okay because what I could also do if I wanted to was just make the back wider than the front. It would just mean my side seam would be shifted a little bit. Mm. But I've been wanting to do a stripe down the side of a dress for a minute. So I'm just going to do that. And I think it's going to be beyond cute. Yeah. I agree. So, yeah. Who knew all that was going on? Yeah. I. <laughs> oh, okay. You never got too early. You missed stuff. I, I, <laughs> Clearly, I do. Because right. I was working on my, my second outfit really. I know. So all day yesterday, right? Every time I saw her, she was like hunched over. Just crocheting away, crocheting away. But I didn't ask. I was like, I'll find out. <laughs> it doesn't like Bob Cratchit. But you know what? Sometimes when a project is on your mind, it's on it really your is. mind. Yeah, I and understand. That's all you want to work on. That's all you're thinking about. And I, I know exactly how that gets. So. And I really like the yarn. It's so pretty and it's so soft and it's just like, ooh. I know. I actually, I have one thing that I'm going to do before I start any summer work. Because I do want to do a summer top. And I've already picked out the yarn for it. So, you know, I'm obsessing about that right now. Mm -hmm. But I think linen gets a bad rap. So I want to work in linen. Actually, I have a yarn that's a linen and silk blend. Yeah, I think I have some linen yarn, too, that mm -hmm. I, I, I think I know what I want to do with it. And that one's preying on me, too. Don't don't sleep. Mm -hmm. My yarn, a lot of my yarn is in my bedroom. So when I'm going to sleep at night, I feel like it's, you know, saying, hello, you see me here, right? <laughs> Like what? Like when you gotta make something with me? Why? Why, why aren't I invited to the party? What am I, Cinderella? <laughs> like my yarn is like my biological clock is it's ticking. ticking like this. <laughs> Any of you seen my cousin Vinny? Yes. Yeah. Oh. That's a goldie, but a goodie. <laughs> but um, yeah. So my yarn is a little noisy. Is the thing to know. So I feel like I was I've shown considerable restraint up to now, only working on one project at a time. But it's hard sometimes because I want to make all the things. And I keep telling y'all sleep is the problem. If that was the, the activity I could eliminate <laughs> so that I could get other things done, I totally would. <laughs> yeah, that is not the problem. <laughs> it is. Sleep is the enemy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, no. <laughs> oh, that's not, okay, let's, let's. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> anyway, are, are, are you done with your project? Okay, great. So I am still working on my socks. Let me show you my sock on my foot model. The tangle is still working for me. There she blows. So that is the upper portion of the sock. The foot has no nothing but the stripe that's already in the yarn. 
Now, I told you guys, right? The socks were not written for my size. All right? All right. <laughs> so, um, the two sizes the socks were written for, neither one of them was going to work for me. And interestingly enough, they were both too big. It just, I think it just yarn happens to be quite full body. Do so. Nordic people have bigger feet? I, I don't know. <laughs> no, because we're in Denmark where everyone's tall, they have like the tallest people in the world. Yeah. So I figure you got to have it's them and proportional the feet. Mm -hmm. I imagine. So they must have big feet. Well, many of them must have big feet. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, neither the socks, neither the sizes were going to work for me. So I did uh, have to modify the pattern to make it a 60 stitch sock so that it would fit my foot. But I'm, look at the mirror. I'm so pleased with that, okay? So happy. Now, my foot is also longer, it seems, than <laughs> the sock was written for. So the last row of, so when I got the, the six stripes going across, cause that's how many mm -hmm. are there. Cause I had to like re-space them a little bit too. Uh, so it would fit on my number of stitches. I'm just repeating that last row till I get to the length that I need to start my heel. So that's the modification. So if you do run into a sock, that's not quite the right size for you. There are some easy things you can do to fix that. I feel like that cardboard foot makes all the difference. Oh my gosh, does it ever. You know what? I am not really a math-based person. What does that even mean? You know... You know, there are some people who would like write formulas and do math and figure out, oh, well, this, yes, that, the other. Some people do math. The <laughs> angle of the calculus and the algebra of the hypotenuse, they would do all of that. <laughs> That's not me. Okay. I will not do the angle of the algebra and the hypotenuse of the. You know, you just say words. <laughs> pi squared. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do that. So the foot model really works for me. <laughs> Are you all right here? <laughs> so she learning... always does this to me. If you don't, if you're not a math-based person, much like myself, <laughs> you can get the, oh. uh, see, now I can't remember what it's called, the um, Fish Lips Kiss Heel Pattern. It's 32 pages long. Do not let that scare you. <laughs> she always says that, but I haven't because even seen it and it sounds scary. People have literally told me, oh yeah, I, I bought that, but when I downloaded it, it was so long, I just put it away. <laughs> Um, you don't have to read the first, let's say, eight pages if you don't want to, because the instructions for making the foot model start on at or about page eight, and it it will open. It'll be the key to any sock you want to make, because I'm not stuck trying to like. I, I never for okay. I'm going to tell you the truth. I never swatch for socks ever, because if you make your socks toe up using the foot model, you don't have to. I'm building the sock on a model of my own foot. And that's how I knew that the socks were going to be too big for me if I just followed the pattern or just picked one and followed the pattern. Because as I was trying it on my foot model, it fit my foot well before either of the two numbers they gave. I think it was like a 70-something stitch sock and a 60-something stitch sock. I forget what the numbers were. I don't care. They're not. They're immaterial to me. So once I realized, oh, both of those are going to be too big in this particular yarn I'm working in, I was like, okay, what do I need to do to make my sock look like the picture of the sock? So I just had to re-spread the, um, the, stripe. the stripes, which I did visually because I didn't have to, you know, you know, have X and Y and Z and Q and three. No, you want numbers, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> So I respaced out the the thing over the stripes over my number, and then I knitted 
according to the pattern all the way because it was pretty much the same after that. Mm -hmm. You know, some of my numbers were different because as you work your way across, you're building these stripes kind of one at a time for a while. And then you're doing two at a time and so on and so on. And it tells you how many stitches should be left. So my number of stitches left was slightly different because mm -hmm. I was working on fewer stitches, which is a type of math I can do. You know, your basic Subtraction. arithmetic. <laughs> And then as I got to, I'm not a math -based person. I am not, okay. I am not a math based person. As I got to the point where I would place my heel, I could see, well, I finished all the rows I was supposed to do, well, all the rounds I was supposed to do, but I still need more rounds. Once again, I, I, I don't care what that number of rounds is. Once I get to the place on my foot model that I need to, to place my heel, there I go. And since I'm doing my socks concurrently, I'm going to do up to the heel on this one. Then I'm going to do up to the heel on that one and keep it moving. So give this a try. You can do toe up or top down, but if you do top down, you will still have to do a swatch. Mm -hmm. But I eliminated swatching and swats by being a toe up lady. But that's the news on the sock. I have about... I would say an inch and a quarter before I in, before I do the heel. I am debating whether I want to do the heel that's written for the sock or if I just want to do a fish lips kiss heel. And knowing me, I will just do a fish lips kiss heel because it's a favorite heel of mine. It fits. I know how to do it. And I Are can pretty much do my the heel in a contrast. No, in I'm not. Contrast. I'm going to do the body of the sock in the stripe, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do the ribbing okay. in the gray. So that'll be kind of fun. But that's where the fun will come on this sock. But I love having neutral socks with a little pizzazz to them. I feel like the stripes, the horizontal stripes not matching would drive me a little bonkers. But... Oh, wait, wait, let me fix that for you. That, that's not fixed. That's not fixed. <laughs> not fixed. Well, look, you only notice it because the socks are lined up together like yeah. this. But on feet, that's rarely the case. It'll look just fine on feet. I guess. But if that helps. It doesn't. <laughs> there we go. Like, <laughs> so we're just ignoring this here. Okay. Yes, yes, we mm -hmm. are. Right. Or, or I can fix it for you like this. But that's, 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 those are your choices. You can stop now. <laughs> <laughs> How tall is the sock going to be? Is it like ankle? Or... Calf length. Okay. I usually do a crew length sock. That's my typical sock. I just want to try making myself some knee socks. I haven't actually not made Your knee socks Your little ankle yet. socks were cute. They're you adorable. Should, you should They're do adorable. more of those, the blossom socks. Yeah, I, I think I will. Matter of fact, I was thinking that I might may, I may make myself some ankle socks to, uh, for sleeping. Sometimes my feet get cold. Do it in like a worsted weight. That way, oh, I seem like in wool, yeah, that'll be delightful. And uh, typically, in a worsted weight sock, I only need 42 stitches, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's what I'm working on. And I did a little bit of work on my blanket this week, which is growing by the way. And I got the first, oh, pass me the blanket, I got the first of my warm colors in it this week because. We're having end times weather, so let's <laughs> say that. <laughs> That's what the 10th century peasant in me is thinking. <laughs> um, so we went. That would explain why you're not a math based person if you have a 10th century peasant in yeah, you. Sure does, yeah, sure does. <laughs> we had like a 70, like 75 degree day after a line of days in the 40s and the 50s so this is actually our first hot weather day well two days because one was 70 some 75 and the other one was like 76 or 77 so i got the first splotch of red in the blanket and it's no longer a napkin thank you very much it'll be a blanket soon like I see blanket in it. It's just not <laughs> you see it has a, potential. A blanket now. She had like this tiny little square on the back of her hand. Like, see my blanket? I was like, no. <laughs> it's, like, it's getting there. It's getting there. It is. It is getting there. But 
so after this red square, we had a 28 degree day. So I'll be, I'll be working towards that this week. <sighs> so are how far behind from today are you? I'm about four days behind. Okay. But like I said. But you do multiple days at a time. Yeah, I do multiple days at a time because it's 10 stitches. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty easy to do. And it's the only blanket I've found that I can knit all together on a double pointed needle. Some it's only this long. do like temperature scarves. I feel yeah. like I could do that I've been seeing before temperature blanket. Scarves. Uh, you know, Emma from Sit and Stitch, mm -hmm. she is doing one that, well, it was about quarantine and it yeah. was about how, how much time she got to spend outside. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so you can, you can do it based on anything you want. But I was excited to get to my first red day. And I'm working on picking a, another project, but that's that's about it. Is that like hard for you? I... You know what? It's because it, there are so many things I would like to do. So sometimes you I get a little caught up in something. that. I get a little caught up in that, but I know, you know what? I want you need to randomize it. I would just put the projects on paper and put them in a thing and oh, oh, oh my god. One out. I want to see you do so that. It does, no, because it, it is all things you all know to do. You're going to do that. Yeah, I, I have like you know, like a queue in my head and I can just like run to anything on my queue next. But I don't want to get caught up in taking a lot of time picking the next thing. because yeah. It's like Netflix. You know, you spend more time yeah. scanning than you do actually watching stuff. Yeah. I don't want that to happen. So I just I'll just grab the yarn that I, I like and work on my next thing but if you find you're spending more time you know yeah. in, in limbo you should just well i've 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 done it a different way i've set a deadline i'm picking my project and casting it on tomorrow so that's it that's like there you go so you drive yourself crazy for 24 hours and yes. then just pick something absolutely okay that makes a lot of sense no <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea <laughs> So I have one last day of being crazy, and then that's it. So the vest has been pushed back. It's going to be a vest. Oh. And I'm going to use the vest yarn, but I don't think I'm going to make that vest. I don't love it anymore, and I saw another vest that I just fell in love with. Squirrel. Okay. And I was thinking, if I don't make that vest, I might make an any day sweater. I don't know. Let me show you the any day sweater. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, goodness, this one. So I spent a little time visualizing the sweater and I kind of like it. So if I don't end up making a vest, I will cast on the any day sweater. I think it's pretty cute. I'm going to try not to make you see, say, can you see what it's looking like on the screen? Cause I can't see it's lower. Ah, there, there we go. go. <laughs> I think it's pretty cute. I have enough yarn for it. I think it'll be really comfy and cozy. So if I don't cast on a vest, I will cast on the any day sweater. So I have a project in mind and a backup project in mind. Okay. And I this... finished the thing sewing. Ooh, oh, what'd you finish? I should my camisole. Oh, do you want to go get it? No, I should have. I should have, but I will. I will post it somewhere. But oh, speaking yeah. of somewhere. Oh, I just remember. I was trying to slip that. Let me there. let me show you guys something. I was trying to slip that past there. Do check out crochetchris.com. Chris has a blog. Okay, crocheters. She is showcasing all the pieces that she's making, both crocheted and sewn. There's pictures, there's details. All the juice is on Crystal's blog. Please show Crystal some blog love. Chris has a blog. That went well. I'm so excited. So I'm just gonna leave that there. I will just and I'll put a link in the description bar below. Okay, what I was gonna say is that it's my first thrift flip. Oh, that's right. It was a skirt that I turned into a camisole, and I had to do 
bus starts and it was awful, but I got through it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I did technically, I have a finished object. Do we still call them finished objects when you're sewing? Absolutely. But yeah, so I, I am like making progress with missing. I think I'm going to make another skirt. So it turns out. The pattern that I had for my pink skirt, it, it it wasn't a tapered skirt, and I just assumed that it was. Mm -hmm. And it's just there's just too much fabric at the bottom of the skirt. So I found a PDF pattern. I'm gonna try one of those for the first time. Terrified. Um, and I'm going to if that's just a simple pencil skirt, but that one is tapered, and I think I'm just gonna make that that skirt again. Because it just really bothers me how much fabric there is at the bottom of that skirt. Okay. But you know what? That's great because now you've done it before. As I'm telling myself, yeah. like, it's going to be easier this time, but it's not. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Did I tell y'all I, I made the drawstrings and I couldn't flip them inside out? And my mom had to do that for me. She did one. And I tried to do the others. And it didn't go well. And she just took her knitting needle as you know, pop, pop, pop. And she flipped them all. And I was appreciative, but I was still mad. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy some sort of cording. And I'm going to just not make my own drawstrings. I'm just going to make that a little bit simpler and not drive myself nuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's easy enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but between the fact that the skirt isn't tapered and the fact that I actually just cut it a little too big, I'm still not understanding how to decide which size you're making from the back of the pattern because you're the numerical size at the top means nothing. No, no, yeah, it means about that. absolutely nothing. Um, and so I just cut the skirt too big, so there's just a bunch of bunch of fabric at the bottom of the of the skirt. Um, so that. I'm going to do another camisole and then I will probably go back and do a second skirt. Hopefully that one will go better. It will. But I found the pattern online. Um, it was a free pattern. There's a woman, I don't know her name, sorry, but her channel is called And So On and So is spelled um, S-E-W. And she did a video recently uh, for she told you where to find free sewing patterns online. And she had like so many good resources. Cause you know, sometimes people tell you like, oh, I'm gonna show you where to find free stuff. And say like one or two things and you have to jump through all kinds of hoops to get it. But no, it was just a bunch of really great websites that had, a lot of them were indie designers. So they might just have one or two free patterns. But when she mentioned Mood Sewing Society, no, mm -hmm. Mood Society, um, it's the blog at the Mood Fabric Store website. Um, they have a bunch of free patterns. They have instructions on how to make things. Um, it, yeah, Mood Society, I'm like, it's my new obsession, but that is not where I got the skirt pattern. I don't remember where I got the skirt pattern, but it was one of the websites that she mentioned. So if you are looking for free sewing patterns, um, check out the video from and so on. I think it's called something like, um, 20 plus free sewing patterns or something like that. Um, and it's going to be one of like her most recent videos. Um, that's where I'm getting, I'm going to be making that skirt instead of, you know, the pattern, the skirt pattern that I bought. Cool. So that's, that's my sewing update. Cool. So I was decluttering some air and, you know, my immediate around my desk area upstairs yesterday. And I, uh, you know, went through some boxes, you know, it's time to just get rid of some stuff. The clutter creeps up on you and you don't realize what's happening until it pounces. So my clutter had pounced and I was like, okay, it's time to beat back some of this clutter. I was going through some boxes of things to get rid of and I found a whole box of patterns. Sewing patterns? Sewing patterns. Sure yes. That. Yes. Apparently I have been obsessing over making all sorts of bags and carriers for a long time. So I have no less than four different patterns for various types of bags. I think I have some bag patterns too. Yes, uh, knitting bags, um, knitting needle holders, uh, crochet hook holders, I mean, all sorts of things. So I think I'm gonna pull out one or two of my patterns and, and get going because 
everything in that box I liked. I was like, look at that. I felt like I found, you know, a I little just, treasure I, trove. I bear no responsibility for this. I no. would just like to be very clear. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. I knew she was being too agreeable. I was like, oh. I'm going to be pulling those out and really playing with them because I'm inspired. And also, I used to like to make my own headbands. And I found a box with like several like pinned together, ready to sew headbands. So I'm going to sew my headbands. <laughs> I mean, and they were quite detailed. They even have like a band of velvet ribbon on the inside so that they won't slip. I didn't know that was going on in my household. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those projects I've forgotten about. So do you guys ever find projects you've forgotten about and get re-inspired? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna finish those headbands. I'm I'm like I pulled them out. Do you I think you would want to sew those things if I wasn't sewing? Because you keep saying that I'm making you want to sew. Well, I think I already have the itch to sew because I see all this sewing happening and I'm like, yeah, I want to sew too. <laughs> and then the finding my patterns seemed like an omen oh. of good things to sew. And then finding my head, I mean, some of them were already pinned. All they need, all they need to do is be stitched. So yeah, I, I'm getting all the omens. The good omens are coming. Okay, good luck with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> so don't be surprised if I'm wearing a very extravagant headband next week. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised. No, it could okay. happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to work out a schedule for the sewing machine. We have to. Where are you going to put it? I don't know. I'll figure out something. Oh, Lord. And you know I like to sew my hand too, right? It's, gonna, it's getting so weird in here. Y'all don't yeah. understand. No, it's not getting weird. <laughs> but you know sometimes you just got to go through the stuff and make final decisions about it so that you can decide yes i'm going to do this or no i thought i was going to do this but i'm not going to do this and and let it go so that's i think a, a habit that I'm trying to build right now is just to release some things that I thought I was going to be doing that, you know, not really. Not so much. You giving up wood whittling? <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while I think about it <laughs> in the context of buttons though. <laughs> I would not want to try to make something round. But you know what? That's a good way to drive yourself. Up. I am. Th I was thinking about doing Dorset buttons, and it's a kind of like embroidered, all embroidered button. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very specific. Good luck with that. Thank you. Oh, I have news. I am going to be teaching at Vogue Knitting in May. Uh, the tickets just went on sale today at noon. As a matter of fact. So by the time you guys see this podcast, the tickets will have been on sale for a week. Do check it out. I'm teaching a class called How to Work a Pattern. And it's all about your approach to patterns. Patterns, every pattern is different. I think, I wish we had a standardized system, like maybe like they have in Japan, where the patterns are pretty much the same, but we don't. So what I do teach in that class is how to set yourself up to succeed with whatever pattern you find or understand before you get started, this pattern is a clunker. <laughs> Let me not waste my time and energy. Speaking of clunkers. Oh, were you done? No, that, that's it. I bought this pattern book. It's like, it's called something like 21 tops, tunics and tanks, mm -hmm. something like that. And I was like really excited because it was all tops that was like, that were like for summer and spring. Um, and the patterns, they weren't tech edited at all. And they're, they're, they're a mess. The last pattern in the book in particular is just like really, really bad. Um, that author is re-releasing some of those patterns in a new book. <gasps> no. Cause it went from 21 to nine. So <laughs> I think maybe some tech <laughs> editing was done, mm -hmm. but I can't, it's not going to be out until like October, I think, but I can't wait because the cover image for the new book is one of the patterns that's in the old book and is one that I tried and there was an issue. Um, 
So I can't wait to see if it's been fixed. It's like maybe there were nine patterns that could be saved. <laughs> <laughs> the rest have to go into the bog. <laughs> But I, you know, I was looking at the book again because I just did a class online in um, uh, tech editing. It's like a beginner intro to tech editing class. And one of the things that I had wished that the class had given us like some clunky patterns to learn to practice with. But I was like, no worries, because I have this dreadful book. You have a whole book full of clunky patterns. So I was looking through it again, and I looked. I don't know what made me look it up online, but. Yeah, some of those patterns are going to be re-released, and I'm like, I might have to buy the new version just to compare. <laughs> wow! <laughs> because I don't know how I I don't it I, it was. It, but was, understand, a book publisher is a book publisher, and a pattern designer is a pattern designer, and they do not intersect. And like one of the yeah. things, and I don't know if this is common in pattern books. But I guess I haven't really paid attention. That like one version, uh, a small could be a 32 inch bust, but mm -hmm. then another pattern, a small is a 30 inch bust. And then another pattern, a small is a 34 inch bust. So there was like no consistency in sizing right. from one pattern to the next. And then, you know, in crochet, you need to know if your starting chain is going to count as a stitch or not. And they don't always say no. They were like sometimes it was in the notes, but there were several patterns where it wasn't um, mentioned at all. And the top that I mentioned is going to be on the cover of the new version. That became an issue because it turned out to do the shoulder straps. Some of the rows you had to count it as a as a stitch, and some of the rows the turning oh, chain didn't count stop. as a turning stitch. Yeah, it was like that. Because otherwise, either your straps disappeared to zero stitches before you made them long enough, or they just never got narrow enough if you chose like one or the other. So that's going to be my practice book for learning how to tech edit. But I can't wait to see the new version. That's appalling. So if you're interested in practicing tech editing and you need some clunky patterns to play around with, mm -hmm. check out 21 Tops Tunics and Tanks or something like that. Um, but now here's the thing though, the designs are cute. They're really cute tops. And if you're not a beginner and you know how to like make it work. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would still recommend the book, but if you are a beginner and you're really relying on the instruction from the book, don't do it. It's a no from me, dog. <laughs> 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 But I just saw something, actually, I was on Twitter yesterday, and this uh, woman who does a lot of uh, pattern testing, mm -hmm. I mean, test knitting, she got a, an email from a designer with this request. She's like, hey, I see in your form that you filled out, you're a fast knitter. Could you, we'd like you to do this 1,200-yard project, and it needs to be ready in two weeks. But here's the kicker. Another tester is um, developing the pattern right now. So I don't know what the person has, if they have notes or if they just have a drawing. What do you mean they're developing the pattern? There is no pattern at the moment. The tester, the, the first tester- Well, we met someone who said the same thing. Yes, yes. She she got pulled into testing for a book and all she got was um, drawings. She basically wrote a lot of the patterns. Yes. And she didn't get any- credit for that but 1200 yards knitted in two weeks no pattern and what they are going to do is reward her with six yard six skeins of uh hand dyed yarn and she could tell her the general colorway she wanted yeah i see the look on your face that was look on mine when i was reading it i was like i don't even understand what you're saying i'm like what because it's um, from a dyer and a dyer would like a sample made in their yarn in two weeks, 1,200 yards. But someone else is writing the pattern. And, oh, no. She would be expected to work with that person to get the pattern ready to go. Mm-hmm. That's a no for me, dog. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> That's what I said. People have audacity, though. I wish I had audacity like that. Just like, 
I'm still like confused. <laughs> I'm trying to understand what you're saying right now. Yep. That's not pattern testing. It is wild out here in these knitwear streets. Like when you test a pattern, there's a pattern. There should be. There should be. I mean, you should not be asked to take because remember that lady was telling us and what the designer asked her to do was, you know, I need you to take really detailed notes. Okay, that's, mm, yeah. I haven't done any pattern testing, I don't think. I don't know. That's, that's not my thing. Because you're working on a deadline and you have to, you know, take those notes. They're, re they're, they're relying on your feedback. And it's, if you have the patience for the process, great. Like, I know some people who love doing it. They, le they learn new techniques and, you know, that's yeah. how they get free patterns and it works out really great for them. But I was, mm, no. And, you know, that's the thing. I think if you are doing it because, like, you know, one person we know that does a lot of test knitting, she wants to support some designers. She wants to support especially, you know, up and coming designers, newer designers that don't have all the yarn support and all of that yet. She wants to just like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for you. That's one thing. But then telling someone that they're going to have to basically write the pattern and get the sample made into <laughs> Two weeks. I'm two like, weeks. What I would have so to say. So was to she that, on Twitter just complaining or was she asking for advice or oh like, no, she put up a copy of the email. She was just dumbfounded. You thought you were like, Y'all gotta see this. Yeah, you, you you thought you were clutching your pearls. We were all clutching our pearls, like, <gasps> like oh dear. The okay. audacity. What is nitpicks i think had decided they were going to start doing some crochet patterns i don't know if they did have you paid any attention i haven't heard about them doing any crochet but, but it could be because they are uh they merged their we crochet into nitpicks mm -hmm. i don't know why they spun off crochet anyway but all right but they um had put out a call like a couple of years ago put out a call for crochet pattern testers specifically and you sent an application and they didn't pick me but i'm kind of glad now <laughs> I'm like i would not have wanted to be trapped in that cycle so that just worked out the way yeah. it was meant to <laughs> sometimes you know what? i'm just off doing my own thing and i'm designing my own projects and i'm really really happy so, i love it sometimes no was a great answer right <laughs> Have y'all been seeing those videos? We're just all over the place today. A little bit. And this, none of this is what we plan to talk about. We actually had a topic and it just fell by the wayside. Have y'all been seeing those videos about people talking about the We Are Knitters and the Zara collaboration? Um, it took a minute for me to understand exactly what was happening. But apparently there were only two kits. Mm -hmm. And one was a crochet um, cell phone case yeah. and one was a hat. And the cell phone case... You got wool yarn and the hat. I think you got two balls of yarn and, you know, the crochet hook and the pattern. But I think both kits were like 50 euros or something like that. Yeah, I remember. They're like 40 or 50 the, euros. Uh, the phone holder. That was a uh, 40 euro. And I couldn't understand what exactly like they had done. But apparently these kits are being sold in the store and people, you know, we are knitters sells themselves as like the whole slow fashion ethos or whatever. But. Zara is always given as like the exemplar of all the things that are wrong with fast fashion. So people didn't understand why we are knitters and Zara partnered up. And I, the more I think about it, the stranger it seems, because I would never have gone to Zara to look for a crochet kit. No, no. And not a $40. 40 euros. So pardon me, more than 40, 40 euro like kit 55. for a phone case or a 40 euro kit. For a hat. I never got into making the, the phone cases. Like, I never understood why people were doing that. But it, it's okay. Um, but that's not a thing that would have enticed me. Like, mm -hmm. even if, like, say I'm in Zara and I'm like, oh, I would have never thought to come in Zara for a crochet kit. But look, here's one. You don't get me with a crochet cell phone case. Like, mm -hmm. like what age group are you selling that for? Because I don't even think teenagers make those anymore. I truly don't thing? know. I don't know who picked that. But you know what? I feel like someone at Zara 
<laughs> wanted that rather than the wheel. I feel like purple. someone at Zara who was that guy at Barnes and Noble who said, "Let's sell LPs." Yeah, let's sell vinyl. <laughs> was fired a year later. I feel like a year from now we're going to hear the person at Zara who came up with this brilliant idea mm -hmm. has parted ways with the company. You know, I heard something really interesting this week too. This guy who sells actually, um, he's a designer that sells direct to the public and he will, he designs these pieces and makes them or has them made. Crochet, knitting, sewing. Sewn. Okay. Sewn. And he was saying that there is, he has an issue with people talking about the clothes they make themselves as handmade and as the only handmade clothes. He mm -hmm. goes, because all the clothes that are made, there's no factories full of robots making them. Let me tell y'all. And I, I feel him because when I finished my camisole, I told myself I could do that camisole in a day. That was a lie from the pit of hell. And as I was sewing, I was like, the people who make clothes don't get paid enough. Not they nearly. couldn't possibly. Not nearly. They couldn't possibly. And, you know, adjusting for experience so that people who do this all the time are making things faster, probably could make it in a day, probably make multiple in a day. Uh, heavens to Mercatroy. And we are really benefiting from slave labor. Yeah. There's just no way to make this many things on this time frame for this cheap and still pay the people who are sewing a living wage. A living wage. Mm -hmm. And it's appalling to think about. And I I don't think I, I understood the idea, but I don't think I really understood what it meant until I was the one making the stitches. Mm -hmm. Because what you would have to pay me <laughs> <laughs> to get me to do that for someone else and to do it all day long every day. Yeah. That kind of money ain't out there. <laughs> so it's I'm all I can do is minimize the harm that I cause by just buying less clothing. Yeah. Because all clothing and is handmade. I'm sewing mm -hmm. from thrifted things to just, you know, lessen the demand for new products that is driving you know, a lot of the, the climate effects we're seeing. And I don't know what as individuals we can do because as long as there are huge profits to be made. Well, we've learned that people aren't willing produce, to change produce, their produce. behaviors to save lives. So they're not going to change their behaviors to help people they can't see, don't know about, don't think of, and don't value. Mm-hmm. So, because if you don't care whether your neighbor lives or dies, well, then. Well. So, I'm I'm just making this decision that's right for me at this time. You know, I'm not trying to lead a movement. I told you the slow fashion people don't put me off. Now, I came to this kind of like in my own roundabout way, just mm -hmm. the desire to customize my wardrobe. And I just started to really enjoy making things that I could wear. And sewing just became a second way for me to do that. Yeah. But it, so I kind of came at it backwards. I started doing it first and then started thinking about the why. Yes. Yeah. But it is something to think about but, because. Yeah. And when he, you know, I never thought of it that way until he said it. He goes, all clothes are handmade. So you're not necessarily, you're not saying what you think you're saying when you can get when you make your own clothes. So maybe we need to come up with another way to think about well, it. Well, I usually use the term me made, like because I made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't easy. No, it wasn't. <laughs> like that was a sweat so equity. Imagine if you made that camisole and you had 30 more camisoles to sew that day. That's <laughs> why so there's netting around the roof of the building. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, I couldn't. I just couldn't. The stress I put myself under just making one thing for myself. Like, I have a very demanding client. <laughs> Does she ever? <laughs> but yeah, to basically have like an overseer who <laughs> demands to certain specifications in a certain time frame. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. So it's another reason to just appreciate my, my sewing habit. Yeah. 
And no one's saying you have to make every single thing you wear, mm-hmm. but I think I'm gonna still buy things. Yeah. I like the shop, Karen. But, <laughs> but if you make it, you're gonna care for it more because you know exactly what it took <laughs> to make this thing. That's not necessarily true. I'm not that careful with the things that I make, but I'll probably learn to be over time. Yeah, you sure will. I'm not right now. You but... sure will. <laughs> but. But just thinking of it in that way, it makes, you know, a $5 t-shirt seem much more suspect. Like, why? Is, I, how is that t-shirt $5? I or, saw a conversation online about people, by people who were talking about whether or not you can save money sewing. And the consensus was they're not saving money over the way they shop, but they're saving money over the way they'd like to shop because they're not buying the high-end expensive things that they would like because they know that they can make really good quality clothing for themselves. But I have found a way to make that process way, way, way less expensive by making things from thrifted clothes. And I didn't know if that was really going to be feasible like as long as a long-term option, mm-hmm. but I really think it is. So I'm able to so and make garments at fast fashion prices and i couldn't be more excited about it yeah i there's a thrift store opening up in hamilton and i've been like going <laughs> online every day because at first they didn't have the opening date it's the um second, second avenue. avenue thrift and it's opening on april 14th because there's finally a date now and i can't wait but i want to like sew through some of the things i already bought I feel like I have to make at least a couple more things before I'm allowed to buy anything else. Mm-hmm. But that was just my, I call it my proof of concept shopping trip. <laughs> yeah. But now like I have some ideas about how to like do better and get more of what I need with my next trip. So I am beyond excited. I just want to make all the things. <laughs> y'all don't understand. Like, I feel like I'm saying the words and y'all just like, <laughs> that's cute. No. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Did you, you told me about a story you read once where this guy's muse was just like cracking oh, the whip yeah, over him. yeah, yeah. I feel like my sewing muse is just like. Instead of a, a you know. A, it's a not sort like of, a pleasant fairy kind yeah, of Yeah, a fairy. His muse was like, like a goblin. Yeah, more like a, a goblin who used to be a marine, <laughs> chomping a cigar. It was like, all right. Um, but I'm excited. I'm just excited to see what I can make. And on that note, I think we're done for the today. Do check out my class at Vogue Knitting. And I still have a couple of surprise bags left. So check out the description bar below. All that stuff will be down there. And I know we always say that our mom is really happy if you like and subscribe, but she really is. Yeah. <laughs> and she likes, she gets a kick out of reading the comments. And so you really are making our mom happy. So please do <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Oh, and, before we go though. Oh, oh, we're not done. Okay. Oh, sorry. We were done, <laughs> but I forgot. I promise to show things that I'm going to be including in our giveaway bag. Oh. So this is... A uh, shawl cuff, a leather shawl cuff from uh, Flytrap Clothing. They are really beautiful. You snap them around your shawl and it just kind of holds everything in place Cute. without poking through. So that's another thing that's going to be in our giveaway bag. When we hit 300 subscribers, by the way, we're almost at 200 now. I'm so excited. We hit 300 subscribers. Everything in the giveaway bag will be packed into a beautiful little box and shipped off to a random winner. So tell a friend. Thank you. Okay, so I think we've had two false starts now, but we really are going to end it this time. <laughs> so, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I can't hit the end. Yeah, you're oh. making a mess.